I'm doing this video series because there is a 19.1 version of Apex now. I have a complete video series for Oracle Apex 18.1 and the current series will use Apex 19.1 and will follow in parallel with the same steps in the 18.1 series. So I have for software this time XE 11.2, Apex 19.1, SQL Developer 19.1. I will not walk through the steps of installing XE and upgrading to Apex 19.1. You can look at the previous video series and this particular video, Apex 00 of 30, if you want a demonstration of how to install XE and upgrade Apex. The steps of going from Apex 18.1 to 19.1 are the same. So if you want to work along, you can download and install Oracle Oracle XE 11.2, or you can use the most current version, which I do not have installed. You can download Oracle Apex 19.1 and go through the steps of upgrading to that. The one other thing that I have is I have also installed a translated version of Apex for Spanish. So if you're interested in that, you can go to the documentation. It's pretty simple to follow and pretty easy to do. But it's not quite as simple as I've seen on a few posts online. It's not just a matter of selecting a different language. You do have to install a set of support files, images, and other things that will provide the translated version of Apex. Once you've done that, then when you log in and go to, in my case, the local install of Oracle Apex, I can pick between Spanish and English. So if I look at my version of the database, as I told you, if I run this, then I can see that I do have 11.2 installed. I can go to SQL Developer Help About and see that I'm working with version 19.1. So let's get started. In this video, we're going to organize the individual application web pages that we have created with Apex. So we'll see how to group pages based on their general purpose. And then we'll also talk about the data model and what remains to be done for the application. The actual primary purpose of this application, which is the intake and placement of animals, has not been dealt with. We don't have forms and reports for that at this point in time. What we've been doing is really building the support forms and reports that would enable us to do the intake and placement of animals. And I said in my previous video that this would be the last one, but I can see that I will actually need to make one more video after this particular one. And I'll talk briefly about the fact that I have other video playlists in YouTube that can take you beyond what I'm doing in this particular video series, which is for Apex 19.1. So the main thing that I'll do in this particular video is organize these pages. I'll start off by creating another form and report for data maintenance, but then I will group these web pages based on their purpose within the overall web application. So we're going to have groupings based on the parent pages. Those are just the, the landing page that you see when you click in the navigation area. If you click on animals, then you see an introductory or parent page before you select a particular report or form for animals. So I'm going to have parent pages, animals, people maintenance, and other as my groups. So I'm going to log in to Apex as a developer. I'm going to go into Application Builder and into the Development Application. Before I create a web page, let me take a look at the data model and see where we are. So we have a form and report for animals, for persons, and for employees. And we have some data maintenance reports and forms for zip code 
dominant breed and animal status. We don't have reports and forms for the category and subcategory that are used in the activities such as doing a medical exam or training or grooming for an animal. We don't have anything for transactions and activities. These are our primary processes in the animal shelter database. So that's what I'll do in the next video. I will complete the application by creating master detail for animal transactions and animal activities. So back in Apex, I'm going to quickly create a form with report for the support tables category and subcategory. I will have it create a navigation item. It will be under data maintenance. And the table is category. The primary key is category ID. So I can save that and run that. And under maintenance now I have category. So we have grooming and medical as our two categories at this moment. I could edit or add if I wanted to. So that's working. I will go back and create something for, go to edit page and I'll create another page from the tools, well from the plus sign. And this will be again form with report and this will be subcategory. I will have it create a navigation item and this will be for subcategory. Now in the columns, oh this is the report, hang on a second, let me run this. If I select one of these and go to the form itself, I don't want separate lines for each of these and I want to switch category to a select list. So I'll edit this page. I'll select category on the left hand side and then scroll down start new row no. I will also go up and change this from a data text field to a select list. And then it's off the screen, but I'll do the category list. And I'll save that and run that. Going back to the report, I can edit one of these items and I'll see that neuter is a medical category. But I can select from the list in the LOV for category. So let me come back to page designer. I'm going to do a right click and open in a new tab so I see the application page. So what I want to do now is organize these pages. I'm going to go to utilities and I'm going to go to page groups. I want to create a group and let me show you I've done this in Notepad++. I'm going to have a group called Parent Pages, Animals, People. So I'll go ahead and create the groups, Parent Pages, for each navigation group. And I'll create that. I'm going to pause the video and create the other groups. So I have created these page groups and I can do page assignments from here but let me move to page designer first and show how you could do this from this interface. So I'm going to pick so I'm going to pick list of animals and I can on the right hand side select what group that page goes in and then I can save that. If I come back to page group and look at page assignments, then I see list of animals is now assigned to a group. 
So once again, I'm going to do 7, 8, and 9 as parent pages. One way to see how this would work or which group these go to is you could go to the application itself. Let's just run the application. And I can click on the parent page and see what the page number is. That's how I built my little list of what goes where. I can click on people and I see that this is page 8. Data maintenance, this is page 9. I can click on a particular report and this is page 14. To get to the form, I have to click the edit icon and see that it's page 15. So that's the way you could step through and figure out what the content of a page is and where it goes in the page groupings. I messed up on the recording here, but let me explain what I did. I have assigned most of the pages. You can come over here and you can check pages and then select the group that you want that to be in. Of course, I do want those to be in animals. And then you can click Assign Checked. And so that's what I did is I scrolled through here checking what I wanted to go into a particular group based on what I had taken notes for. And then I assigned those. Now, I do have one report here or one page that's not assigned. I'll go ahead and check that and just put it under other. It may be something I want to move to people, but right now I'll just assign it to other. Then I can look at the pages by their groupings while I'm in the utilities. I can go back to application and I could type in other and hit enter and even though the page name itself doesn't contain other, I see the grouping for other. Let's take that off and do animals. I see the pages from all the pages in the application that are assigned to this particular group. So when you have 50, 60, 150 pages in your application, this will be very helpful in keeping a handle on what pages support what processes in your overall application. So back at the overview of what I'm doing in this video, I, I want to end with the reminder that I have other playlists in YouTube. I have a series for Apex 18.1 where I have 30 videos for Apex itself and then I have videos that correspond to certain Apex videos that explain SQL commands that have been used and I have database concept videos. I have kept the topics the same when I've done Apex 19.1. So if I look at 19.104, I could jump to the 18.1 video and I would see essentially the same topics, only minor differences based on the changes in the versions. If I used SQL in 04, either one of these, if there is a corresponding SQL video that explains the SQL, it's going to have that 04 designation and then SQL 01 or SQL 02 if I have two videos. The same thing applies to the database. That way, if you're doing something in Apex 19.1 and you want a better understanding of why I'm doing something in terms of the database or SQL, then you can search on Apex, the number, dot SQL, and look for 01, 02, so on and so forth. You can also go to the playlist, obviously, and just simply look at the list, the entire list for Apex 18.1. I'll see you in the next video.